Yesterday, Minister of Sport Azizi Kordua met with the South African Football Players Union to get insights about the meeting. Let's now talk to the South African Football Players Union Vice President Debo Homonyai, who joins us now via Zoom. Debo, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate you making time. Now, of course, we heard, you know, from uh, the the the, um, the Minister Azizi Kordua saying that, you know, while certain issues have been addressed and put it and put to bed, conversations around Compensation for women's sport in the country must continue. Why do you think it takes so long for some of these contractual, contractual disputes, you know, to be finalised um, at the eleventh hour when we're supposed to be galvanising our support ahead, uh, ahead of a team, you know,'s tournament? We are discussing fundamental issues. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, and good afternoon to the viewers as well. Um, I think one of the key elements is that. <clears throat> Um, the president of the Federation of Safa himself, Dr. Denis Jordan, uh, emphasized during the press conference that, the joint press conference, that um, I think the timing of it, that's what made it to take more longer because the negotiation needs to start on time and all the stakeholders need to be available to try to make sure that all the niggling issues are attended prior to the, to the preparation or prior to the the departure for the national team to go compete in a bigger tournament such as the World Cup. I think uh, those are some of the lessons that uh, we have learned as stakeholders in football to try and make sure that the, the, the players must focus uh, solely on, uh, on, the, on the tournament itself. Exactly. Uh, and just talk about this the, this particular matter and, and, and this deal. I mean, uh, in my intro, we said, of course, that there was that all important meeting where certain, you know, issues were raised and, and uh, ultimately and, 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 you know, with, uh, with very good intentions were put to bed. Just talk to us a little bit about what are some of the things that came out of that? Look, there were some concerns uh, from the players' pers uh, perspective on our side. Uh, whereby players were given contracts which does not address the issues of incentives or bonuses. And uh, they, the, their, their requests were quite simple to say, yes, of course, in the contract that we've been given, can we therefore include or, or the 570,000 rand, which is uh, uh, money paid by the, the FIFA, uh, can it find its way into the, same, the very same uh, contract and any other uh, bonuses or incentives that might be uh, coming forward for for them as players, they demanded that uh, that be put in into the very same uh, contract. One of the key elements that they raised was that we are a team and we've got the technical staff members that uh, uh, we believe that they also deserve um, uh, the very same uh, incentives and uh, they need to be guaranteed as much as, as players were guaranteed a certain fee. These staff members or the support staff need to be guaranteed a certain fee as well. That's where, as a union, we were tasked, we were given a, a power of attorney to represent them by the very same staff and the players. And we engaged the South African uh, uh, Football Association on those matters. And unfortunately, it took long, it dragged. Up until now, you saw things that happened. We ended up uh, obviously agreeing at the end with the intervention of the uh, Ministry of Sports but we are quite happy now that we, we were able to find each other as a stakeholders and try to make sure that the players uh, focus at the job at hand. Mm. I, I mean, uh, just listening to the conversation that Desiree Ellis was having with uh, my colleague a little bit earlier on, saying that, you know, they thanking South Africans for their support, even though they don't attend most of their matches in person. Uh, but, you know, just thanking the fans. But what would it take for South Africa, you know, to promote women in sports, um, be it by supporting them financially or even, you know, just coming to those games? I mean, we also have the netball tournament coming up in a few months time. Well, in fact, yeah, in uh, you know, the issue fact. of equality is, uh, yeah, yeah, the issue of equality is quite important. I think the minister has addressed it as well. As a union, we share the very same point to say, um, ladies' football need to be elevated to another level, to the same level as where men's football are. Of course, as a union, we would love to, to champion and see these women playing at the club level and getting an income from that. That's what we can say. The, the game of football uh, in terms of women football and any other sports uh, 
uh, it's equal to the men's game. And uh, Inter, we, we must not talk about it when it's not uh, remunerated the same. But let's talk about the, the development of it. Let's talk about the remuneration of it, incentives of it, so that it becomes uh, a, a better way to elevate poverty as well and make sure that uh, we encourage mass participation in terms of women in the in the sporting industry because um for them uh, previously it was not a career at all we need to make sure that the women as well they have an opportunity to have a, to make a career out of it as well